Back here at home, let's get a look outside with meteorologist Alex Puckett. Alex, you know, Brianna is going to be uh, doing the Super Bowl halftime show this year, and so we might be needing to take her advice later this week and get under our umbrella Ella Ellas, eh? Right? It, we, we could in parts of Alabama. Uh, the bigger story is going to be the big impacts along the Gulf Coast, particularly the Gulf Coast of Florida. Here's the latest on what is now Tropical Storm Ian. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, this will likely be Hurricane Ian. The pressure 989 millibars. That is a 12 millibar drop from earlier this afternoon. Uh, 65 mile an hour sustained winds at the center of this thing. That is a 15 mile an hour jump from earlier this afternoon. And if it keeps on pace, we would expect this to meet rapid intensification criteria before it makes landfall in western Cuba. Motion right now northwest at 13 miles an hour. Let's look at the forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center. This will make landfall uh, in western Cuba probably sometime Monday night or Tuesday morning. Decent odds it's a major hurricane, category three or higher, as it does so. There will be some question as to how this interacts with some of the higher terrain in western Cuba. That could disrupt the storm some. Uh, it could also alter how it tracks. But we do expect this to maintain. Uh, or even intensify as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico and makes its way towards Florida. Now, here's the deal. Here's your forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center as it approaches Florida and makes landfall in Florida. These are the best hurricane forecasters in the world. So you're going to see a lot of buzz on social media about this model says it's hitting Tampa. This model says Apalachicola. Here's the deal. The best hurricane forecasters in the world say this makes landfall somewhere between Cape Coral, Florida, and Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, sometime between Wednesday morning and Thursday night. The further east it is, the faster that landfall will be because it's going to reach land faster. The further west it gets more time in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, you'll note these numbers drop here. The winds will actually drop some as this approaches the Florida coast. That doesn't necessarily indicate that this will be a weak storm, though. The wind field will expand. The surge threat will still be very significant. By the way, the surge threat will still be significant south of this cone, as will the flood threat, tornado threat for parts of Florida as well. And note that parts of Alabama are in this cone. If this takes a more westerly track, we could feel some impacts for this, uh, from this in central Alabama. If it's further to the east, we would likely be drier, but we could still see some tropical downpours from this system. Ladies from the National Hurricane Center, tropical storm force winds most likely from the Big Bend of Florida and along the west coast, but the numbers aren't zero in central Alabama, although they are low. Storm surge will be an issue even on the other coastline as onshore flow could cause flooding towards Jacksonville and Tibby Island, Georgia. So this will have some major impacts along the Gulf Coast. Here, impacts still somewhat TBD. For right now, cooler, drier air pushing in behind the cold front around here. We had one little shower in northeastern Coleman County, and that's starting to push into Blunt County right now. Uh, so very light rain. This pushes out, though, tonight, drier and cooler air pushing in over the next several days. But then as we head into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, that's where the forecast is a little iffy. It'll depend on the track of Ian, but I do expect at least the potential for some showers and things to get gusty at times. Tropical storm force winds not likely, but I can't totally rule them out just yet. So stay tuned to the forecast over the next few days. Keep up to date as we fine tune things. Probably by Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have a better idea on the exact impacts here in central Alabama.